Hi, it's John Benny. I'm here in my roller team Auto Roller 746, um, which is a motorhome, and I'm busy doing some upgrades to my wiring and my inverter so that I can do things like boil a kettle from electricity and solar and also record songs in my mobile recording studio. So first of all, this is the uh, back of the van. Uh, really, the first thing I did when I started this little project, it's going to take hopefully about a week. I've just taken all the stuff from the front, like the driver cab, backs of the seats, um, the table, the seating area, and some of the seats uh, that sit at the front. So this is all the junk, just put at the back. And when I come down here, this is where I'm doing the work. So in this uh, motorhome, originally the, um, the battery, the leisure battery sits uh, just here. So there's like two seats that you can sit on with a table in the middle and the battery sits under the seats. And so this was the original. And just when we bought the van, we asked for a second battery to be added. And so the dealer added a second battery here. Now, what I found was that actually the wiring wasn't quite as I expected when I, I took a look at it. So first of all, um, they were connected in parallel. So there's two wires. Uh, you can just see them actually pointing out of just here. They're disconnected at the moment, but they ran just from uh, here and two wires ran under here through this cable. So there's usually a walkway bit over over this part It ran through here uh, Up uh, next to the heater here and connected to the battery and what that meant was that although the um, Two batteries were in parallel the actual electronics um, which all come through this main live here um, all the electronics for like the the heating and for the fridge and um, the TV and lights and everything all ran from one battery. And the problem with that is that what happened was, it was quite funny, is that actually two batteries uh, kind of buddy each other. So when this battery was running at a charge, this one started um, helping it by topping it up with more. So they're kind of like just balancing charge between them, which sounds good, but actually it's not efficient at all. So the first thing I did in this project was to make sure I have all the right equipment and I had to buy lots of cabling. Um, so I bought this, let me try and lift some up here. Uh, I bought some cabling, um, which is super thick. And the reason it's super thick is because the batteries are quite far apart. So this is, I think it's 95 millimeters. Uh, it's very heavy and it's very difficult to work with. Um, and it's, it's like a kind of multi-core. So it has uh, multiple strands uh, in it. You can just see there. Um, multiple strands together, and that means that it's more flexible for uh, for driving around, which is really good. You don't want the cable splitting or, or causing you problems, so it's more durable. So what I do is I've got, so far I'm about halfway through the work. So after I took everything off, um, I took a good look at the, the electrics. Now, I'm not an expert on this, but I'm starting to learn a lot, and definitely some great YouTubers out there like Gadget John. Um, do check out his channel, it's amazing. Um, and what I found was, I needed super thick cables because the batteries are very far apart. And the first thing I need to do is run two cables, so a positive and a negative. And they need to run in parallel, just all the way through to the positive and negative on this battery here. And what that does is it links the two batteries together. Um, and then I have an inverter. So down here, I have a 2000 watt inverter. And I've put it just under the seat here. So it's this, this black thing with the stripes that you can see. And what that does is it converts the power from 12 volts so, uh, from 12 volts from the batteries into 240 volts because this is the UK. And so I have uh, the live, so the red wire from the inverter and it runs all the way down here and it runs into uh, the battery directly here. So when this is done, I'll have two red here. I'll have the red that's the link to the other battery and I'll have a second red live cable and that will run to the inverter. And then... I'll also have the negative. So what happens is when you have two batteries like this, what you do is you link them together and then you draw power from them kind of diagonally between the two uh, to balance the, the, the draw. And so what I'll have is I'll have the black. Uh, tonight I'm going to run the black cable all the way from here um, over to the other battery here. And that will mean that the live comes from this battery and then the negative comes from this battery. Uh, and then the link between the two, so the two cables that run in parallel, allows the, the current to flow evenly. Um, and so, yeah, the next step I have to do is add the second red cable. So I had a bit of a challenge getting the red cable here. Uh, sorry, the, the black cable here. I'm going to have to put the red one in here too. But the black cable um, currently runs under here and comes out through through here. 
Um, I'm going to have to add a second one. It's very thick, it's very difficult, and it's very difficult to put the flat panel back on, but there should be just enough space. Um, and then, yeah, so I'm just going to add the second black cable here, um, and then I'll add an, a second red cable here, and that should be them connected. Now, I'm then left with what do I do with the Motome electrics, the original electrics. And so my plan is to figure out what to do here. Now, this is a, a shunt. Uh, a shunt is like a, a kind of negative um, a connector. Uh, and you can also get ones that have Bluetooth connectors so that you can monitor the power usage. And what I'm going to do here is probably connect this one instead of it being to the main battery, because it's negatives for the for the Motome system already here. I'm going to run um, the positive instead from this battery. Um, and I'm either going to put in a new cable. It doesn't need to be uh, this super thick cable because this super thick cable can can cope with 300 amps. Um, and in fact. That this this thick cable does have. I added a uh, like a flip switch um, uh, uh, fuse, and that allows about uh, three hundred amps to run through it. So it's it's graded under the the rating of the wire, um, but it'll it'll be plenty. Uh, it'll cope with um, at least a couple of thousand, like a two thousand watt inverter. So yeah, so I need to figure out what to do here. I'm definitely going to put the live. Um, over to the battery, I might use the the original cabling because it's thinner. It's only going to draw maybe 20 amps at most, and so the existing cable might be fine. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So at the moment, um, the van's kind of in parts with a battery there. You can see this is the um, like the inverter charger um, for uh, 240 volts to 12 volts, and then there's my inverter next to it that I added, um, and that works really well. And the inverter has a control panel here and the plugs and another job I'll do I might do this separately but is run I'll probably do the wiring but I'll run a cable from here um, out to here and then back through here um, and it means that if I'm clever I'll be able to get power uh, up into the like the main sockets here when we're off grid um, so that's just like a, a main socket at the moment it only works on hookup so yeah lots to do um, I thought I would just give you an update I uh, about halfway through i'm doing most of the work in the dark so it's also nice to see it during the day my advice is first of all i'm not an expert please do seek the proper advice and if you're not sure uh, get an electrician um, but to give you a sense of the sort of work uh, you can do yourself uh, i'm very lucky to have uh, some friends that can help me as well and yeah i've got um, a lot to learn still to connect this up but i'm following as much safety advice i can you know getting thicker wires getting lower rated fuses making sure all the connections are super solid when I'm um, putting them together and that the, the cables are secure for when the van's rattling around. Hi, it's John and I'm on kind of day two of my project to uh, rewire my 746 uh, Roller Team Auto Roller. Uh, it's a motorhome and I'm busy re rewiring um, the inverter and also the two batteries together. So uh, I'm going to take you through uh, what I've been doing. I started on Sunday. I think I did about four hours on Sunday and I did the first kind of uh, tidying up. So I removed a lot of the stuff from the, the back. Um, sorry, from the front to put it in the back. And also I've been um, placing all the wires and like cutting them to length. Um, so after about eight hours so far, I've been able to um, put in the, the wires in the right place. Uh, terminate the, the, the wires so the cables now have um, using this uh, amazing um, pneumatic uh, tool. I'm not sure what you call it. It's like a crimping tool, but it's huge and it's awesome. Um, and it basically compresses the metal on the, the edges of the, uh, on the, the ends of the wire. Let's put that down. Um, so yeah, uh, I've done that. And tonight's going to be exciting because I'm going to get to uh, connect it up to the batteries. Um, I had to get some different um, connectors onto the 12 volt batteries and yeah it's going to be exciting let me just quickly show you what I've done. So as a quick recap um, this is the original ledger battery under the seat here this black thing with the little do not throw in a wheelie bin sign and that's the additional battery that, that were, the dealers added and this battery um, had the live and the neutral from this other battery which is correct um however uh all of the electronics came off just one battery so all of the 
the kind of original motor wiring for the fridge and for the um, the heating and everything else that's the heater here. Um, all that was running off one battery, so that's not very useful. So uh, what I've done is, so far, uh, I've connected in um, these uh, these wires. So I have um, one here that's already, this one is on a, uh, a fuse trip switch um, of 300 amps. And these super thick cables uh, will allow uh, over 2000 watts to run through, but um, obviously it's capped by that fuse. And then these two wires here are the uh, the kind of parallel connectors. So they link all the way through. So they go around the back, they come out um, just next to this, this uh, heating tubing. Um, some go up around here and there's the inverter just here, which I showed in the previous episode, a 2000 watt inverter. And then the black, there's a black cable that comes out, so that's the neutral, and it runs uh, into this other battery. So basically, inverter has one um, live, which goes to the um, original battery here, and then it has its negative, which runs all the way around there, and then comes into here. So I'll connect that on on later. Um, so yeah, the three the three cables here to the second battery are one live and one um, neutral that come from the other battery, and then one um, neutral that comes from the inverter. And so that means the inverter draws from across both batteries at the same time, which allows um, for an even spread of load. And then what I'm looking at doing is, so the original motor wiring came in here um, into this shunt, and then it came out and went into this, into the, the live of the original battery. Um, but then all the neutrals also go into the same battery. So to split those apart, and rather than mess with, there are more neutrals, okay, there's two. Um, what I've done is uh, I'm going to reuse the existing link cable um, that the, the, the dealer put in, and I'm going to run that round. Um, it's already run around to this other battery, so I'm just going to connect the live onto there. Now, I want to double check that that's thick enough, and it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, and it, it, it obviously is, because that's what they installed, but I have ordered a, a replacement cable, um, which will be thicker, and that'll allow um, at least 50 amps if I need to. So yeah, that's uh, let's patch my dog, sniffing around. That's about it. Um, yeah, so tonight's the exciting one. I'll give an update and we'll see what happens all the work at night after my day job um, and before I write a song every morning uh, my uh, Tascam uh, Model 12 uh, mixing desk for my mobile recording studio also turned up uh, and I'm going to put that just uh, down behind the, the seats here um, so yeah, super excited to do that, uh, get up and working but my re that's my reward for when I've done all the, all the work and we'll see if it can be powered from the inverter and that everything works so yeah, uh, tonight connect it up and then probably tomorrow start to put things back together um, and make sure it all still works. So thank you for watching. Send my love. Hi, it's John and welcome to episode three as I rewire my 746 Roller Team Auto Roller Motorhome and I put in um, an inverter and some other accessories as well. So I'm just going to talk you through what I've been doing over the last um, three days. And I'm close to finishing this phase, yay! And uh, super excited to share with you uh, how far I've got. Hey Patch, this is my dog Patch. Uh, he's a Papillon and he is trying to rub off some water from himself on our carpet in the cab area. So I'm going to start um, first of all with the, uh, the, the original battery here. So this is the original Ledger battery and it's... Um, it wasn't wired quite right, uh, so previously the uh, the dealer had put in the batteries in parallel, but really the connections to the battery were all serial because they're all connected into the main leisure battery. So we're only really getting the benefit of one battery kind of plus a friend. Um, so what I did last night uh, when I worked, uh, first of all, I was working in the dark, which was quite hard um, with a head torch, but uh, I managed to connect up the wires. So. Uh, here are the two live connections. Um, one comes from the other battery and the other comes from the um, the inverter. And um, this is the negative um, that is a link to the other battery as well. And what I have just down here um, is the uh, this thing down here. If you can just see it, this is a 300 amp 
um, a fuse switch and then here is a small shunt um, and so the shunt originally came this is the negative and it came into uh, into here sorry the live is red uh, the live came into here um, but what I've done is I've used reused the original cable that the dealer uh, provided and this runs with the other cables um, out the back along here and it goes in under the seat and I don't know if you can see under here but under the passenger seat um, it's currently connected I can point my finger it's currently connected just here on the live uh, as well as the link cable to the other battery and then on the other side is the uh, the two negatives so one negative goes to the inverter and one goes to the other battery so the good news is uh, it all worked uh, there's the, in the inverter just there this thing here um, so last night I was able to, to turn it on um, and I'm just going to quickly show you what's been happening uh, during the day so while I've been working it's now lunchtime um, the, there's a solar panel on the ceiling and it connects it's a 130 watt uh, solar panel just a single solar panel and it connects into this thing which is an MPPT solar controller and what that does is um, has some wires and they run down uh, into the battery to charge it up um, now I think for the first time that's been wired now that I've changed the wiring it's the first time that it'll charge both batteries properly at the same time treat them as like one one circuit um, and up here so I can try turn this on I don't know yeah, it is on. Yeah, it still works. That's good news. Um, so that's the power on. And this is the voltage of the um, the living area. So the two batteries. It's now 100% it says. And that's just the vehicle battery. That's a third battery that I haven't shown you uh, that we don't touch. Um, so yeah, that's good news. It's up at 13.5 uh, volts. It usually goes up to 14.4 volts. Magic number. Um so yeah, and we should be able to check the lights and stuff. So I think I've still got the lights on up there from last night. Um, which I should just turn off. And what I haven't tested yet uh, in earnest is the inverter, but I can turn on and show you. So if I just flip the switch here, I don't normally do that. I just left it on, left it off overnight for safety. Uh, but there's a controller. So if you look down here, the inverter has a blue cable that runs around the back and it's just a communications cable. And it runs runs to this control panel that you could have anywhere in the van. Um, so if I turn that on, the inverter is telling me that it's at 100% capacity. And so if I plug in any um, mains uh, devices, like I have a fan, uh, what else do I have in here? Um, I have a I have a cooker, which I think is probably too um, probably too powerful. I think it's 2,500 watts. So I don't think my inverter or batteries would cope with it. Um, but I do want to test tonight. I'm going to test the kettle and I might do a quick video on that because um, I'd love to be able to boil a kettle and then So there's two two jobs. I haven't finished yet um, And I I may just leave for a little while um, The first one is I bought a new shunt. So this is very fancy. This thing is a Victron um, uh, shunt, what's it called, Victron Energy, I can't remember its total title, uh, but this thing here, what it does is, um, you connect in where that small one was that I showed you earlier, and you connect in on your, um, on your neutral uh, connections, and you run them through them, so I think I would run all the, the electrics for the van, and also the inverter through this, because it takes 500 amps, um, so it's super thick, and it's what it does is it runs with a comms cable here uh, into this little device and so this I would mount on the wall or in the cupboard somewhere I'm, I'd maybe put it in here I don't know um, yeah somewhere easy and what it'll do is it'll show you exactly how much voltage and how much uh, amps you're using at a time so that's gonna be really cool I'm gonna save that as a separate job but what it might do is run the cable so that I don't have to take everything apart when I do it and then another job, um, so that would tell me how much uh, power I'm using, and it'd be really useful for like power hungry devices, like when I plug them into the inverter to see. And then I also bought this thing. Um, I don't speak uh, German very well, um, but it's an auto switcher. And so what it does is, I don't know if that's a diagram, I don't think it does, um, but basically you can plug in, um, it allows you to plug in your inverter uh, into the whole um, electrics of the van. So the van does have 
um, power sockets like this. So there's one here, um, that's for 240 volts. And then there's another one here next to the TV. Uh, that's handy for an Xbox. So this, this one's handy for a kettle. Um, and then there's another one down here. I think there's just three in total. There's one down here as well, which is use, useful for the sitting area. And so those, when you're not on, um, when you're not on hookup, what happens is uh, they're just dead, like nothing, nothing happens. But what you can do with this thing is you can connect it up and in this motorhome, it will go in a cupboard under here. That's for another video. Um, and it'll allow the auto detection of power input. And so it'll decide if you're not on um, hookup, it can switch over to your inverter. Now, that's quite tricky because there are other things to take into account, such as the um, down here, there's a like a battery charger. Um, and I don't want the batteries to charge themselves uh, while it pretends to be on hookup. So I haven't quite figured out how to solve that yet. Um, there are some options I'm looking into, but at the moment I've just run a cable. So there's a cable that runs just from the front of the inverter, which is a normal um, 240 uh, cable, and it just runs through here. And I've just put it in next to the fuse box. Um, and as you can see, I'm very blessed with completely sparse uh, electronics. So everything is quite difficult to get around, but it, last night I lifted up these, um, these two panels here, I lifted up the fuse box and was able to get this cable in. So this is just going to sit here, uh, disconnected for now. Um, and then when I'm ready, I'll probably run the cable up through this cupboard, um, up through the back of the, the control panel, and then it has to come all the way down here and then down under there. So really all for this video, just saying that, uh, there are other jobs and I'll, I'll do those afterwards. So thanks very much for watching. It's super exciting. Tonight I'm going to put all the stuff back. Um, so I'm just going to replace that one thin cable that the um, the dealers put in that needs um, uh, something a bit thicker. Uh, I'm going to rate it at 50 amps. Um, and I'll do a quick video of how that goes. I'll run some tests as well. That was my dog, not me. <laughs> and down here I'm going to take all this stuff. Uh, which is all the stuff that was uh, from the front, including this, which will need some uh, extra uh, space cut in it to let the bigger cables through. I'll do that tonight and then put all this stuff back and that'll be good. So that will be Friday and it means we can, after all this hard work, uh, we can go away the weekend if we want to. We're not sure if we will, um, but uh, we've been going away a lot and it's super fun and you could wake up to a nice fresh cup of coffee with this uh, this great setup. So yeah, thank you for watching and I look forward to sharing more. Thank you. Sending my love. Hi, it's John. I've just been setting up my Motome, which is a Roller Team Auto Roller 746. And what I've been doing is connecting the inverter to the main um, a wiring system of the motorhome. So the idea is that we can use any of the electrics that we would use when we're um, on mains hookup, uh, like in a campsite or at home. Um, we can use all that when we're off grid as well. And so what I've done is um, I first of all connected up uh, my inverter, which is uh, just down here. Let me show you. So this is the, the driver's seat here. And um, as you can see, I've been busy I've connected up the 2000 watt inverter here and so what it does is it has uh, when it's turned on it has a normal um, mains connector uh, just here so there's a mains plug so that's uh, 220 volts and it comes out uh, and it goes underneath uh, my feet here and it comes through the cupboard and what I've done is I had a bit of an adventure um, feeding it to the to the main um, switch area so I've run a cable that comes up here and then if I open this cupboard I've run it on the inside so I'm just going to tidy this up and put it on like the inside of the cupboard so you can't really see it it runs up at the top and I managed to get it up uh, inside this panel here so just really just by pulling the panel out a bit it was quite funny I couldn't get this out because if you can see the screw is like right next to the ceiling so uh, there's no way of getting a screwdriver in but I managed to get it through there cable comes along here. Now, once it comes down to here, uh, it just runs down the back of the, um, there's like a panel, I think to help air uh, the back insulation. So it comes through this cupboard and then I've run it through these existing wires. So these are like a mixture of lights and mains wires. Uh, it passes down past the heating. Um, there's one of the plugs that it supplies. Uh, you can see that's a normal 
a UK plug. Uh, it goes down through here, down under here. You can just see the cable here. Um, and then it comes into here. So this is the uh, the auto switcher. Um, and so this, uh, this is like the main um, circuit breaker. So when you're on mains hookup, this is the thing that um, has its own circuit and it supplies all of the um, all the electrics in the van. Um, and then, so what the auto switcher does is when it detects uh, this wire here, um, when it detects this one, um, which is the master, uh, sorry, this one, the top one here, uh, this is the master, when it detects a supply on that, um, it will supply everything in the van through that. Um, however, when it's uh, when the inverter is turned on, that's the slave, the middle one, I think, uh, and that will supply the van, the uh, or 220, 220 or 240 volts uh, from the the main uh, batteries, the two leisure batteries. Um, now there is one small problem with that whole setup, uh, and that is that um, let me just show you around here. Uh, the problem is that um, underneath here, uh, it's quite hard to see. Um, but underneath here is actually the charger that charges the, the batteries from mains hookup. So what you don't want is to, for the batteries to charge themselves. I think eventually they just run themselves flat if it wasn't already very dangerous. Um, so what I've had to fit is um, a relay. So its installation isn't complete yet, but um, what it does is it means that uh, this is hooked up so that when it detects power coming from um, the uh, inverter, uh, what happens is it switches off this kind of silver box here, which for for charging uh, your batteries when you're on hookup. Um, I'm losing my words. <laughs> so so yeah. So uh, I can quickly show that. Uh, I think you can hear the heating's on at the moment. Um, so if I just turn on the inverter here, so it has a remote switch. If I turn that on, you'll hear a funny noise. And that buzzing noise was um, the relay detecting power from the inverter and then turning off um, this uh, this mains hookup here and so it'll no longer charge the batteries when it's on uh, the inverter which is good because you want the solar panel to do that and what would normally turn up here when it's on mains power is uh, like it would show a little hookup sign here uh, and also that it was charging the batteries so that's not showing so that's good news um, and then really any of these plugs will now work so uh, there's a plug here which is really handy uh, there's a plug here, so like when my son's playing um, Xbox, I'll be able to use that. And uh, what else? Yeah, the heating. So the heating's quite funny. It thinks that it has um, main hookup, which is true. It has a supply from the, the batteries. Um, however, I, I did test it uh, running the heating, and it's about 400 watts, um, like 30-something amps, which was huge. Uh, so I don't really think that's, that's viable. Um, and also the fridge, so the fridge you can turn on uh, and the fridge will think that it's on mains hookup as well. Um, so I could just do that and it'll consume power. I think that was about 45 watts, um, as I could see from the battery monitor that I've added. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's it. So it's now just a case of putting everything back together, securing the wires. Yeah, so that's it. Um, I'm going to put the whole motor back together and um, secure all the wires and then I'll be happy to share uh, what it's like um, and yeah in, in future I think I'd, I'd love to get some new batteries uh, these ones uh, that were told me to be a rental so I think one of the batteries is a bit flat um, and I think it struggles to boil a kettle but uh, everything else works so that's that's super exciting and the cool thing about the auto switcher is that when I plug in from the outside uh, and I will test this um, there's a rain. When I plug in from the outside, what happens is the um, the auto switcher realizes that it actually has mains hookup, and it disables the um, the inverter from powering the rest of the the van. So, uh, so that's really cool. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, thank you for watching. Hi, it's John, and so today I've been setting up the motorhome so that the inverter can power the motorhome electrics when we're off grid. And what I've done is I've uh, connected up um, this little box here, which is an auto switchover. And if I can open this cupboard, so at the moment it's turned on. So the inverter's turned on and it's saying that the slave um, is active and that um, it's giving power to load, which is the main circuit. 
Um, so I put that in and I ran a cable from there. It runs up here, all the way through the backs of these cupboards, up to the back here, inside this cupboard. Um, you can probably see up in the corner. This goes up through there, and then all the way down to here, under here, and then into here, which is where the inverter is. And so there's a plug just under there. The inverter sits under here. It's a 2000 watt inverter. Um, and you turn on and off just here. So if I turn this off, you hear a couple of clicks. One was there, which is a relay, and one's over here, which is the auto switcher. And I added a, a relay, which is just underneath here. Um, and what that means is when you turn it on, uh, it's quite a high powered one, so it makes a bit of a noise. It'll make a funny buzzy noise. There we go, and that's it turned on. And what that does is it disconnects the um, the power for the battery charger. So you don't want the battery to recharge itself, um, which wouldn't be very efficient. So um, so that's it really. It means now I can use all the plug sockets. So instead of just being able to use this one that was for the um, inverter, I can now use like this one here. Um, and I can use the fridge off of the inverter, um, which is quite cool. I think it uses about... 35, 40 watts. Let's turn it off. Um, and then also, um, you can see that the, the heating thinks that it's on a uh, hookup, which is not, um, but it's been powered by the inverter. So you can also run the heating. I did turn that on at electric one, which is one of two bars, and that was about 400 watts. So that's certainly a lot. And so there's a plug socket here I can use. And then there's one here, my son will be happy. So we can use his, his Xbox while we're, while we're traveling off grid. So yeah, that's it. Um, that's it set up. I haven't tested the actual auto switcher yet. So when we go uh, and connect up in a campsite and we connect in power to the side of the um, the motorhome, then we'll be able to uh, test that it switches over. But it should happen um, super quick and uh, with no power interruption, which would be great. So yeah, that was uh, that was super fun. Uh, it took a couple of days to do the work because I had to um, really run wires to like the length of the motome, um, but it was super fun and uh, I look forward to more motoming adventures. Thank you for watching. Send my love. This is my mobile recording studio, the Tascam Model 12 in my motome, and I have a bit of a grinding issue. So what I've done is I've put my knee, rolled up my jeans, put my knee against the mixing desk and that's allowed us to get rid of the ground um, problem for now and I'll have to figure out how to ground it to the actual vehicle itself. I put the camera up here and down here I have my, my two channels for guitar. There's my guitar on my knee and um, let me flip the camera around. Hey, it's John just to prove that I'm recording this in my motorhome. So here's my microphone and uh, my guitar and then I also have my Model, tw model 12 Tascam down there and that's how I record my songs. Um, I also mount them on the uh, the camera up on the um, tripod there. So yeah, I hope you enjoy my songs. Sending my love from England.